Um, we are uh, listening, our ears and eyes and hearts are open to heaven. So Father, speak. Um, we, um, it, you don't need our permission, Father God, but anything of our own volition, um, we lay down before you today and uh, and receive what it is that you pour out and what you uh, want each and every one of us to have. So let it be said after our time together that each man, each, each woman, each child heard exactly what it is that, uh, that we needed to hear. Uh, so that we can stay on that straight and narrow path to heaven. Uh, that is our desire uh, to be set apart uh, for your pleasure and for your glory. Thank you, Father God. Give us everything we need for life and godliness tonight in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Jackie, you can go ahead and get us started with some worship. That will be wonderful. Thank you. Rejoice in the Lord.
Amen. Amen. Father, bless you. Thank you so much for the songs of Zion. And thank you for the opportunity, uh, the calling to lift up a holy praise to a deserving God. Uh, bless your people, Lord God, tonight in a particular way. Uh, speak to our hearts. Um, we want to be guided by your every word. Uh, we want our instincts to be trained. We want to be trained all the way down to the very, very foundation of who we are. Uh, do so through your word. Do so through your spirit who dwells richly in us. And let us understand what it is to be the kingdom of God in the earth. Uh, in Jesus' name, be pleased with our time together. Uh, we have set you in the midst of our attention on the throne of our praise. In Jesus' sweet and blessed name, we thank you, Father. Amen. Amen, beloveds. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. It is good to see you tonight. It is good to be seen. It is good to see you. Uh, I uh, want to start off with something that I wish I didn't have to start off with, um, but we do. Um, we had a... a uh, we had uh, someone in our church who's precious to us go to be with the Lord today. Um, and I think that probably everyone uh, with me today knows that. Um, but uh, I, I would like to turn it over to my wife who has some information and just has some perspective, have, having spoken with, um, uh, with the family today. Um, I want uh, her to go ahead and to start and to get us, get us on point. Uh, and uh, tell us what we need to know just as far as anything logistical or anything that there's some questions that you might have. I think she has more information than, than I, certainly than I do. Um, so honey, go right ahead and speak to us. So our, our loved one had um, a very good morning this morning and participated in Proverbs Challenge. I think um, many of you read her writing Interestingly enough, it sounds like she was signing off in uh, her last words, saying that she would see us along the way. And you're talking um, about you're talking about Megan Mer. Uh, not, I'm sorry, not Megan. You're talking about Monica. Mm -hmm. Mon you, you didn't. I didn't mention her name, and neither did you. So that needs to be needs to be said. We were talking about Monica okay. Mert. Okay. All right. Well, she she had a good morning and um, was going about her regular routine. Um, she was with her granddaughter and um, started to not feel very well and said that she was going to lay down. And um, then the family came to try to wake her, uh, but she had gone to be with Jesus. And so um, the, the result is that um, it was her time. The Lord took her and he took her quickly and peacefully. The family would like to memorialize her. Um, uh, given that this has just happened today, they have asked for a moment to get their bearings. And as soon as they're ready, they'll let us know. Thank you. That's, um, <clears throat> that, and that's pretty much uh, about as much inf information that we have. Uh, so, so uh, any any details that need to be shared, we'll be sure to you know share with the church family. Um, you know, as things uh, unfold and as we know more. And so, thank you so much for your prayers. And those of you who have a relationship with Megan, uh, a relationship with uh, Penelope, a relationship with James, um, please feel free to reach out to them um i'm sure you're you're uh, them just knowing uh and that you are thinking about them praying for them um is is very very important right now one of the things i pray in particular in times like this is if the lord can give me uh in any way uh if there's a way that i can uh, share the burden um the way that i like to describe it is to um you know if there's a tear that um that i can take you know, from them, from their eyes, uh, or if there's anything that I can do, um, this is in service to them. Um, I will, I'm sure I'll be hearing more in detail and, and be giving you details as we get them. Uh, and, uh, and so I think, it, let's, as a matter of fact, let's pray right now. Um, Cody, can I get you to pray, brother? You will. Yes, sir. Oh, Lord, we are... Um... Um, sad, Lord God, to be honest. Um, 
yet and still father god our hearts are filled with joy because we know where our sister and and, and our mother in the faith is right now lord god and um <laughs> uh I, I wish i could see what what she sees lord i wish i could hear what she, she she's hearing now but um in due time father uh we just thank you for her lord god and um we just um are so grateful for the christ in her and uh the blessing that uh she is to the body of christ father god and so um as much as we can as as pastor said lord god we um um uh we just honor her tonight lord god we thank you for her lord we lift up praises to the name of jesus christ lord god because the christ in her was a wonderful thing to have known and to have witnessed lord jesus and also as pastor said uh lord just lead us lord um if there's anything we can do father if there's anything we can do father god to just bear um some of this burden lord god to to um to just encourage to to cover and to love just reveal that to us lord god and lead us to the open door we thank you for this life we know that it's precious we know that it's sweet lord god um, you have created it and and it is it is a wonderful thing that is beyond comprehension lord it belongs to you uh, the word says that the lord gives and the lord takes away lord it all belongs to you and we just give you thanks and we give you praise father god um, i just pray for for every um, um heart that is hurting right now lord god we lift up uh megan and james and penelope to you lord god thank you for covering them lord god i've heard it said that in times like these there is an inexplicable uh, grace from heaven lord and we just pray that you would cover them in that grace lord you would shower them in that grace father god and give them a peace that surpasses understanding lord god of course they are grieving of course they are hurting yet and still lord may they be encouraged may their heads be lifted in their lord and their god and their king lord and uh we just trust and know that you will do the same for us and all in the body of christ who just so dearly loved monica lord uh, we thank you for her ministry lord we thank you for the testimony of christ in her lord and we thank you lord that she was an example of what it is to finish well lord um, we thank you for all of these things lord god and thank you for the grace that that, that is over our conversation tonight in jesus mighty name amen amen and amen thank you cody thank you thank you um i just wanted just an observation uh uh monica became a very um present part uh, uh member of the uh, proverbs challenge group the facebook proverbs challenge group and, and over the last oh it's been a, it's been a good 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 minute now maybe maybe last year where she really did you know check in and and make it a point uh, to participate and a point to share, uh, a point to bless us. I, I told her when she first started writing, I was just really, really blessed by the gift that her writing was to the group. Um, just, uh, I mean, she just, <laughs> I told her, I said, you need to write a book, <laughs> you know, because just the, um, she just has a real sweet gift for, um, for uh, for writing for sharing through her writing and uh and she expressed just the joy uh and the blessing it was for her to be a part of that group um i think she was the one that said uh said to me or said to us i think um that she did not really have a feel much of a feel for proverbs you know um up until you know getting involved <laughs> and and uh, participating uh in a committed way uh to uh to the group and with the group and um, being committed to that um, as part of her uh, devotion. And so we all got blessed. You know, the thing about the Proverbs challenge is, and, and, and that type of thing that, that God offers us is, it is an opportunity, not only for us to get blessed, uh, but to bless others. And she um, also, also as a pastor, it, it is a, a tremendous thing to say that you're current with someone and you know where they are, you know how they're processing the things of the word of God. That's how, by the way, I see church. That's how I see pastoring. Um, it is it is um, one of my greatest joys to know that that uh, the, the people that I pastor are, um, are, are very, very um, fluent in the word. 
are very, very fluent in the scriptures, um, able to reason through the scriptures, able to um, uh, to see the word of God and to hear the voice of God um, over the den of the world and be able to take everything that we see, everything we witness, everything that we're happening and everything we're experiencing and process it through God's word, chapter and verse. Um, and there, and Christians who are able to do that are uncommon. And I, I don't say that to make anyone better than anyone else. We're not setting up any hierarchies. But people who are able to uh, take the Word of God and have the, and be very fluent and very, very rightly dividing the Word of God and, and doing it in a context, doing it in the context of the house of God and the people of God, sharing it with others. So there's not just a blessing to us, but there's an overflow. And so I can say that we all were blessed experiencing the overflow uh, of, of what God was doing in Monica's life in, in, these, in these last years of, of her life. Uh, and so, like I said, we heard from her this morning. She, she, she uh, made her, uh, her heavenly deposit uh, in us uh, today at the Facebook challenge and, um, and just like she normally does. And it just was, in, but we did not know that would be the last time that, um, you know, that she'll be sharing with us in that way. And we, we get a chance to share with her in that way. So I say that to everyone. Um, it's just a reminder that, you know, um, yesterday's gone. Tomorrow's not promised. And uh, and today is the, is the day of salvation. Today is a day that we have to live out our salvation before the Lord and to walk before him so that the Lord can use us uh, to, um, to help in his work of sanctifying those who are saved and saving those who are lost. And uh, she will, she will, well, I would say she'll never know what a blessing she was, but she probably knows now <laughs> because there's not much she doesn't know uh, where she is. She's just stepping into, you know, a realm uh, where she's discovering all the things that, that we one day are going to discover. But uh, uh, in case she doesn't know, um, and, and which I know that she does, uh, I see your hand, honey, um, that, um, that she is a part of that uh, great cloud of witnesses um, which it speaks of in Hebrews 12, 1. Um, therefore, uh, uh, since we are uh, surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin that so easily ensnares us. And, um, and uh, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, uh, and so on. Um, that great cloud of witnesses, it is, a, it is the, the fathers and mothers of faith that have gone before us. And uh, we stand before them and, and uh, their testimony um, is a part of how God encourages us and keeps us. And it's something that we're responsible to pay attention to. So um, I'm glad to say, as her pastor, that she finished well. Um, I got, once again, I got a chance to, to, to speak with her, so to speak, you know, every day, you know, um, and to hear what she was thinking and what the, knowing that she was in the word, in the house, in the closet, probably being able to, to be, it, it, and I've done many, I've been part of, uh, of officiating and a part of many home goings, many funerals, many memorial services. It's not always that you get to say that you know that that person had a relationship with the Lord that included a daily time in the word of God, not just reading it, but processing it and sharing it uh, with the people that, that, uh, that, that she loves. And that's what she did. Um, and so that's a tremendous thing to be able to say. I hope you can say that about me. I hope I can say that about you, that, uh, I know that I know that, uh, that you're in God's word and you're in God's house and you're in the closet of prayer. I know it because you share it and I see it and through your service and through your, your taking hold of what God's given you and uh and and parceling it out to others who just may need just that encouragement today you have no idea you know how many people are blessed by your discipline and your determination uh, just to do what you're asked um and uh so thank you for those of you who have joined me in the proverb challenge who've joined some of the things that that uh the ministry has made available to you because you just um we never know when um we're going to stand before the lord and uh and be able to give an account and what a great thing to say lord i you know, I, I heard, I followed the instructions that was given to me, uh, and I receive it as, a, as 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 from the Lord, and uh, and so and I know that's what she did. So, uh, while it's been a hard day for me because I I, I felt a, a a real closeness to her uh, through her um, writings and through her contributions and and the way she she would bless me every now and then, you know, with some of her writings and just talk about you know just the benefit of of sitting under this ministry. Um, you know, so I, you know, I have a particular uh, space in my heart as a pastor 
um, but you have a particular space in your heart as a friend and uh, as, a, as, as a sister. She's a mother in the church. And so we are poor, so to speak, um, but uh, the Lord can, you know, the, the Lord, the, the Lord will fill every, every space, uh, every space in our heart that we make available to him. He'll, he'll, um, you know, there'll, there'll always be that, that space uh, there for Monica in that place. And there should be, uh, and the Lord is with, uh, her memory. Um, when we remember, remember her, we remember her, um, in the Lord. And so it's not just the, you know, the dull ache that you get with somebody that you can't surely say, you know, belong to the Lord, but, uh, cause I've experienced that, but she's one that if, you know, if my testimony of my witness is anything, uh, worth anything at all, I would say that she, um, is certainly, certainly a child of the most high. And uh, she's in his arms right now. So thank you for your prayers, especially for Penelope. Uh, she's just, you know, old enough now that she's very, very, you know, aware, cognizant of everything, you know, that that's, that's going on. She spent every day, as, I, as if I'm not mistaken, most days with her grandmother. And uh, when I would see Monica, you know, uh, over the over the course of this uh, pandemic, I would see her riding up and down the street. Uh, 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 I saw her several times that she was stopping, waving on, and Penelope was always with her, you know. So. Um, so thank you for your prayers and your covering. That's that. That's uh, that's so important, and that's what a that's what a church body does and is. Um, Pastor Sue. Sorry, one second, Pastor Sue. You're not unmuted yet. Okay. You said a couple of things. Um, just now that was shared in the conversation with Megan today. Um, Monica had a great anticipation of seeing the Lord, great anticipation. And it came out in her writings. It came out in her conversations. Um, it's what is holding up the family today because they know that she's in the presence of the Lord, which was her heart's desire. Um, in writing the Proverbs challenge, it was her practice to read um, the proverb for the day, to read it the day before, to take some time and to pray on it. And then it would just flow the writing that was supposed to come out that day. But her approach was always a humble approach and um, she anticipated that she would hear <laughs> if she was saying anything incorrectly. That, that's what her thought was, that she might not be interpreting the scriptures properly, had no idea how deeply she was blessing each one of us. And so Megan and I had a chance to laugh today in our conversation uh, imagining her face when being in the presence of the Lord and knowing <laughs> how much of a blessing she really, really was and how many of us she really, really touched. Um, we had shared that if we were to sit down in a room with her, there's no way that we could ever convince her <laughs> that her writings were touching each one of us so deeply. But now she knows from the master. And um, we just uh, had a moment of joy thinking of her hearing from him how much she blessed the body of Christ. So I just, I just want to share that. Amen. Amen. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an important thing that everybody realizes um, their um, their value to the body. Uh, we, you know, there's a tendency to look at, at people who are you know, set before us. Um, and that's, you know, that that's going to happen. It's a, nat it's a natural thing. Uh, but and that, there isn't always an appreciation, I, I believe, um, of how uh, much of a gift that you and individually, you know, uh, God uses you individually uh, to bless the corporate body and and so he doesn't ignore the small things as you know the small things are great things with god and the things that we think are big things are small things with god so uh if you think your contribution is small well it it may be but god says the small things are big things 
And uh, he says if we're faithful with the small things, then uh, you'll find us faithful with the greater things. So thank you for being faithful in the small part that you play, um, uh, because your small part is a great part. And it is what will be remembered, you know, your faithfulness to do um, to do the little things, not just the great things. Uh, but the things that, uh, that 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 we might overlook, God doesn't overlook any of those things, and uh, and so I, I, I I'm grateful for uh, once again the knowledge of uh, who uh, Monica was and who she uh, was becoming, and uh, and and who it is that uh, that uh, the Lord has taken on to Himself today. So it's our loss, it's heaven's gain, uh, and um, may the Lord you know just just pour out grace upon that family, grace of. Grace on grace, grace on top of grace, um, uh, because that's what's needed at a time like this. And uh, it is also a good thing that when you do have a discussion about somebody's life that just passed, that you, you know, uh, through the tears, there is some laughter there. Uh, that that's a that's a good sign of, of health. Um, that uh, that we remember the, the funny things <laughs> and the and the things that, uh, that, that that brought a smile to our face. And so that's. Um, there, there's more to be said, and, and, and as, as details come for um, come to us, we will make sure they come forward to you. Uh, and if you have any questions, um, just go, just let us know, and we'll do our best to answer them the best that we can. And uh, we'll do our best to be a service to the family the best that we can. Amen. 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 So, uh, there are qu- if there are any uh, questions tonight, uh, let's go ahead. And uh, tonight is a uh, Bible answer man. I'm not. It's funny. I just want to let everybody know this is a term that I use, Bible answer man. Um, but there was a um, uh, a, a wonderful, wonderful uh, radio teacher uh, that we listened to for years, uh, named uh, Do- uh, Dr. Walter Martin, um, uh, and he had a, a radio show called the Bible Answer Man. And uh, so uh, he's gone on to be with the Lord. Has gone quite some time now. So I'm borrowing that uh, that that little. A title there, a designation. So, uh, Bible Answer Man Junior. Um, so, uh, and all with all honor to all the men and the women who uh, do such a wonderful job of giving uh, uh, clarity, bringing clarity, and giving answers to questions that that that, that come uh, when we you know pay attention to the Word of God. Uh, there's so much to to know, uh, uh, and there's so much to receive, so much to understand. So it's just important for me uh, to be able to provide just an opportunity if you ask questions that many times you just don't get an opportunity to ask, you know, in our, in our, in our normal regular services or, or regular communications. So that's why we set this time apart. So um, if you've been studying the Word of God, then you have questions. <laughs> As I study and I have questions. And uh, so let's do our best to, to get answers to those questions uh, as the Lord leads. So I uh, uh, go ahead and uh, make yourself known. Uh, you can let Jackie know uh, digitally uh, with the chat function, or you can raise your hand and she can uh, recognize you. Okay, I see you, Doretha. Let me first add you to Spotlight, and then I'll unmute you, and then you can ask your question. There you go. You're good um, to go. Well, um, it, it, it's good to join back up uh, with Bible Answer Man. I call it Ask the Bible Guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll take and that I've one too. I've been doing it for years. <laughs> okay, but, um, okay um, I, I, I'm asking for grace um, in this question. And uh, I had a really good question last month, but it came um, the week after Bible Answer Man, and I've forgotten it. <laughs> But um, so I uh, listened to your message on finishing strong, and um, there's a couple of questions in this question. In that, um, you, uh, you had once said that when you're behind the pulpit or when you're speaking to uh, the people at the father's house, that um, most of it is addressed to our spirit man, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I had heard you say before in a couple of uh, uh, teachings or sermons about um, we weren't called to uh, get involved so much with uh, the current day things that's going on 
uh, over the web or something or the group Black Lives Matter are out there protesting. Um, and uh, I, I, I believe I heard you make the statement that we, we weren't called to that, according to the word. But, uh, and I hear what you're saying about it in my spirit, but I still have a question as to when you make a statement like, um, we weren't called to be, you know, so involved in out there protesting and stuff, a believer is going through faith and prayer um, when these issues come up. And uh, so when someone uh, gets involved or feel like they, you know, or, or, or develop a passion for uh, jumping into some of the things um, in the secular world, um, how would you determine, I mean, how are you determining that overall people aren't called to something like pursuing the education or uh, participating in a protest or some political thing? Um, when do we know if that's a passion that God has planted in us or that a person is just going off of their um, carnal passion to be involved in something. And, uh, you know, uh, and I remember you had the uh, statement of not finishing well. Um, so, I, I think, I think, yeah, um, I think, I, I think I understand, I think I understand your question. Um, so, I, I, I uh, some of the things that that uh, some some of the uh, as you recounted some of the things I said is more of an interpretation of of, of what I said or, or how you heard what I said and I don't I don't have a problem with that at all because I realize that that we 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 hear through you know we hear through these ears and our own filters but yeah. so let me let let me make let me make some let me just make a couple of points that I think that will, will give some context um, uh, to all of those questions and and give some clarity I think um, for when you you and I are saved. Okay, um, Doretha, it's not the end of anything, it's the beginning of everything. When you and I are saved, if, if we truly come to understand what it means to be saved, we have been bought with a price and we become bond servants of Jesus Christ. Now, my, my, let, me, let me put a parenthesis around all these things and say, these things aren't often taught in the church. This is not what you hear from most people who do what I do. It's not what you hear. But this is what the Bible teaches. Okay, that, um, and and, I, and I'm not making myself superior to any other teacher. I'm just telling you that it's a different perspective because it is not based on on anything around the scriptures. It's based on the scripture chapter and verse itself. Um, when you take a look at the scripture, the scripture was given to us through by the Holy Spirit uh, and communicated through men who were 100 percent, 100 percent given to Jesus Christ. They removed themselves from every concern other than the pleasure of the Savior as, the, as revealed to them by the Holy Spirit. Um, God's expectation for his children is that we belong to him. There's an exclusivity to our relationship with him, that we belong to him, and that we spend our time and our effort um, and our resource um, in, in a constant, constant um, effort to draw near to Jesus Christ and to step through the open doors that Jesus opens and to step through no door that he closes and to understand uh, things in the spirit. Jesus, I just read the, uh, just, I think it was yesterday or today, probably early this morning uh, in John 4, where he's speaking to the woman at the well. I said, the day is coming and the day is where God is seeking those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. And so for Doretha's life and my life, and Jackie's life and everybody's life who's listening to us and everybody's life who's, who we say, who would say that I'm given to Jesus. Well, then uh, God's measurement of your value in the kingdom has everything to do with the measure of Christ in your life, the measure of Christ in your life. That's has that's the, when God uh, when, when you and I judge one day, 
you are not going to be judged necessarily. I'm not going to be judged if you did this, you didn't do that. You, you went to Bible study on Wednesday night, so sometimes you didn't. Uh, you get a demerit for the, the week, Wednesdays you didn't get there, and you get a check for the Wednesdays you did. You know, I mean, because sometimes, you know, we, we, we're liable to look at look at things like that. Uh, and, but the kingdom economy is not like that. You know, it is God's, it, 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 Rita, there's a... Um, there's one of my favorite proverbs uh, that says it is the glory of a man to overlook a matter. Uh, and think about it. If if it's, I, I thought I was thinking today on my prayer walk, how many things that God has overlooked and 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 has has pardoned me for. Um, and so how I need to be one that overlooks and pardons other people for because that is the kingdom. So that little truth right there, along with all the other truths that God is constantly revealing to us through his word and through our fellowship. And, you know, though, that's where the life of a child of God gets consumed. Everything out there is seeks to put that life to death and the platform itself on the throne of your attention. Everything. All these things are worthy things. You know, uh, uh, all things are permissible, Paul said, but not all things are beneficial. So the things that are beneficial to me and you are much narrower that I found over my over these years. I found that much narrower the road to heaven is narrow and few find it few. So uh, that tells me something that tells me there's a lot of directions to go off to good directions. I'm not talking about, you know, knocking off 7-Eleven or, or, or the bank on the way home from church or anything like that. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about. You know, uh, it, 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 so when Doretha leaves this leaves this world, will we be able to talk about her and her focus on Jesus Christ? That's the question, because that's what matters today for Monica. Whether she marched in a Black Lives Matter um, uh, protest or a White Lives Matter protest or whatever lives that you think matter is 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 I'm not saying it's a bad thing or God's not happy with you or anything like that. That's that's not my issue at all. Let every let every man be convinced in his own mind. Every woman convinced in her own mind that this is what God had wants me to put my effort. And I'm not gonna argue with you about that at all. I just when when I shared that, I said for me, the Lord told me, Eric, I don't want you marching in protest. I want you marching in conquest. And 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 and, and the weapons of your warfare are not carnal. They are not physical. They are they are not natural, but they are mighty, spiritual to the pulling down of strongholds. So I'm learning in my life to, to make up my mind that it, I'm either going to do this. And, 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 and here's what I find, Doretha. I find that I am every place that I'm supposed to be when I'm supposed to be there. I'm in every meeting I'm supposed to be at. I'm in meeting and I, I don't withdraw from 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 the uh from from people i don't withdraw from the city i don't which i live in the city <laughs> and you know i i am the community you know um i shop here i live here i go to I go to the store here i hang out with people here. i go to the restaurants here i contribute to this place i pay my taxes and i you know i try to be a good neighbor and keep my house up and 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 everything you know so i'm fully involved and in understand that i'm in the world but my focus i am not here jesus the whole time he was here he was also totally detached from all that would attach itself to him in this world so that he could be exclusively set apart for his father. Now, that I know that, that you know, when we look at the, the things that people are going through and the issues, because I'm, I'm like you, I, I, have to, I have to back down, you know, because I get I am mad about certain things that are going on. I'm livid about certain things that are going on. And every now and then it creeps out, you know, that kind of thing. And I just have to, I have to reel myself back in. And, and give that to Jesus um, and trust him with it. And if Jesus, now, 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 so as your pastor and your friend, you know, I want to let you, if you call me and say, Pastor, I really, really do believe that that this, I've prayed about it and, and talk, even talked to some of my sisters about it. And I believe I'm supposed to be a part of this march or working on, you know, with these people on these, these issues in my community. I will bless you for it. You know, because because I'm not saying that 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 you know there's sin or that's wrong for you to do that. What I'm saying to you is that there's an ever-growing understanding of what it means for Doretha to belong to Jesus, and and to and to be seated out by Jesus. So where Doretha does end up, Jesus put her there. And if that's at the Black Lives Matter or the you know or whatever, <laughs> you mentioned that was so if it's if it's at their events, if it's an NAACP event. If it is at the, you know, the denominational event uh, or, or the church, you know, the citywide church events, that kind of thing. My assumption is that everybody is uh, is doing the best that they know how and following the lead of the Lord. So I don't have anything negative or to say about it. But what I will say to my sheep, 
But I'll say to you is that is that there are things that if we paid attention to the Lord, if we put that effort and that energy and that oomph into reading those Proverbs every day, if we put the oomph into being in the house and the word in the closet, if we put the oomph into bringing our tithes and offerings and our bodies to the storehouse, if we do those things, all these other things will be added to you. And there's a grace on your life. I know you. I've known you for years. <laughs> and I know that you walk in the grace of God. There's a grace on your life. And, and I've seen a progressive grace on your life over the years that I've known you. And you know that we, we talk about that. And so, and, and that is because you are more and more and more, you know, bring all that stuff here. And, 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 and all that is important. It, it's important. I, I, you know, yesterday, I was just, it, it was a sad day for me. Uh, because, you know, the president spoke about the Tulsa massacre. This is something I never heard about growing up. I never heard about it. It was, it's been, it's been wiped away from, from, from out, tried to wipe away from our consciousness, but guess what? It didn't, it's not wiped away from God's consciousness. That's what we're not talking about it because somebody decided to talk about it. We're talking about it because the Lord wants to talk about it. Because, um, and, and, I, and so I, a little bit before I go on, on I just want to end my answer to, to your question. Uh, because, and I hope that was clear. I hope, I hope it was clear that, that the whole point is like, is you and me getting our lives and grabbing all of those loose ends, because God is not a God of loose ends, and, 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 to, and to bring all of those things to, to offer to him every day. And then to go forward with confidence that the Lord is pleased with you. He is using you. And he will teach you. Sometimes, you know, we'll get involved in stuff later on. We'll be like, man, I wish I didn't get involved with that. You know, and the Lord, the, Lord, the Lord's not mad at you. He's like, oh, I told you not to get involved with that. I told you not to get involved with those sinners. You're not, it's just not his attitude. He's just teaching us. It's like, I, I can't tell you how many things I've been involved with. Like, well, that was a waste of time. But it wasn't because I couldn't know what I know now. If I hadn't, you know, if I hadn't uh, been involved with that particular thing. So, you know, yeah, yeah. Just so, so I, I hope w uh, that, that what I communicate is that, is that there was a narrowing of, of our focus and a, and a, a, a uh, sharpening of our focus. I remember I taught you a few weeks ago, the Lord had told me to focus on my faith. And, and, and I, and I'm still digging out the reason what that means. Yes, Lord, I know what it means. And, and I, I still find out what it means. And so I, I, I want to uh, offer that to you too. Focus on your faith. Um, uh, so uh, the, the question Doretha asked, before I take the next question, the question Doretha asked kicked off something because I talked about the Tulsa massacre. So I was thinking today, um, excuse me, actually praying today about that. Just the, 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 the I mean, <laughs> you can't, you can't, you can't dig your way out of that. That's, um that says more than we can really process uh the demonic um yeah the the, the racial hatred which has been you know our, our reality in this country and when it manifested like that 100 years ago uh in in the most inexcusable way and and you know just and you and and what i'm watching now so i've been praying a little a lot about this the same spirit um, just having once again just raise his head up and be released on us where where um you know and I think we have you know an ex president um who who presents a real true danger to us because he's somebody who is not accountable to anything or anybody. And his followers are the same. So there's no telling what they're liable to do because they're not accountable to anything. They're even trying to whitewash, quote unquote, uh what happened on January sixth. And and so there, you know, I'm, I'm aware of all these things. I have I have real strong feelings about these people and these things. But the Lord has taught me a couple of things: to pray for them, which pray for your enemies, pray for those who despitefully use you, and and the Lord will rain the coals. Uh, and I don't pray for them so He can rain coals on them. I pray for them because He told me to pray for them. And that, and so my but the reason I bring that up and even talk about that is because as I was praying about the Tulsa massacre, and because I need a, a, a heavenly perspective on these things, so I'm just not walking around mad. You know, and 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 so the Lord took me today to, um, it took me today to Second uh, Samuel twenty one one and two because I asked the Lord to say why now, why why now I know it's the anniversary quote unquote hundredth anniversary, but why now and and in in Second uh, Samuel twenty one the first fourteen 
verses has to do with the famine in the land. And David uh, went before the Lord and asked, why the famine? And the Lord told him it's because Saul murdered the Gibeonites. Now, you may remember that in the day of Joshua, when uh, the Lord told them to, you know, to, to, to basically that, that, that this territory that he was giving them was his and he wanted them to wipe out uh, 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 the people. But the Gibeonites were shrewd. And they presented themselves to Joshua as people would come a long, long way. And, and really, when they were really right next door <laughs> and, and they were slated for destruction. But they came and, and, and Joshua made a, and, and the leaders made a covenant with them to not destroy them um, before they found out that, that uh, they, they, didn't, they didn't just consult God first, put it that way. And so, but they had given their word before the Lord. Uh, and so the Gibeonites were not to be touched. Now they were submitted to to, uh, to basically bondage, but they uh, and serving the people of God doing the heavy lifting on some of the things that people of God were doing. But they were um, they they were protected because the word had been given to them by the people of God, and everybody knew they were protected. But Saul, you know, uh, persecuted them and murdered them, uh, and killed a large killed killed a large group of them. So. Um, and so there's a famine in the land, uh, you know, some 40, 50 years later when David's king and he asked why. And he says, because of that, because of that, you see, when when um, Abel was killed by his brother, the Lord said to Cain, his blood cries out to me from the ground. Uh, and, and when I took a, take a look at the the blood that has been shed on the ground of America, um, you know, especially when it comes to the indigenous people and when it comes to, you know, pe people of, of, of color. Um, when I take a look at that, you know, it, 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 is, it is not surprising to me at all that there will be times when, when the Lord will, will, and he's speaking to his people. He's not speaking to everybody, he's speaking to his people. When he brings things back to our remembrance and there needs to be an offering made. And what David had to do was David went to the Lord, went to the Gibeonites and asked them, what can we do? Because the Lord's hand was heavy on the country until there was something that was done. And so I'm, I'm, now I'm going to leave it at that because I'm not going to then extrapolate that out and take that and make a prophecy that, Lord, this is that, this, that, or the other. I, I just like that if in my own devotion, connect dots here. So I can understand how God sees these things. And just as God's heart grieved over Saul's uh, dealing with the Gibeonites, and especially because it broke the covenant, broke the word that they had given to those people, so is his heart grieved. And, and, and so the bringing up of things like Tulsa and these things like that that need to be talked about and need to be repented for, um, need to be and i mean the, these are these are horrific things these are massacres and let's not even talk about uh the the native americans you know um you know someone asked me the other day have you ever not the other day but but asked me before have you ever been in a restaurant um and seen an entire native american family uh at the table and and i had never thought about it and the answer for me is no and it's not i don't know i'm not making any uh, any conclusions that I know, I would assume that their families go to the restaurant and there are, but I've never seen a full Native American family um, out and about. I just have never seen it. And, and, and that speaks to the destruction, you know, that was, that was, was, was wreaked on them. Um, and if you and I think, you know, that God doesn't see these things, I think over in Israel, I think God holds you know, that, that will hold the, the people of Israel responsible for their treatment of the Palestinians. I believe that's true all over the world. And 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 just as he would hold people responsible for the treatment of the Jews and just and, and he would hold us responsible for how we treat each other and and so on and so on. And, and uh, I, I say these things to to um, just encourage you that, um, you know, fight for in your in, in your closet of prayer and your studying fight for it a heavenly perspective so that you will have some knowledge of what is really happening in the spirit. And I do really believe that right now there's that which is happening in the spirit. There's a sideshow over there with a bunch of people acting crazy and we're trying to overturn elections and all that kind of stuff. That's a sideshow. The spirit behind that sideshow, uh, a, a, a spirit of destruction, a spirit of nullification, uh, uh, the, the, the spirit um, that the, the spirit of murder, the spirit of insurrection, the spirit of rebellion, you know, and you and I have to know the word 
uh, because Black Lives Matter and NAACP and the ACLU and the and 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 all of these you know all these organizations, wonderful as they are, they cannot get to the root of the issue. Uh, the root of the issue is spiritual, and no, if if you and me, if you and I don't get don't come to God in the spirit and challenge ourselves to see things in the spirit, then we won't have a spiritual answer. And so we'll end up with, we'll, we'll end up with, you know, solutions that aren't solutions thing. And, and we'll end up trying to fix things that can't be fixed that, you know, they could not fix what was done to the Gibeonites, but God was looking for an acknowledgement of it. And there was that which happened. It was going to cost Saul's family for what Saul did to the families of the Gibeonites. Um, and if, you know, the, the God we serve today is the same God of the Bible. Um, you know, so we just need to be, um, the reason I pull myself, the reason from, from all this world stuff going on in the world is because this has, God has to have somebody to talk to, you know, when he wants to share, you know, the depth of his heart and how, and his dealings in the world. Because, um, um, I, I read something from a, a world famous pastor the other, just yesterday, and he was being asked about um you know just the state of of the community and and through COVID and and, and all the things we've been through and that kind of thing and 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 uh, we'll, let me make a long story short in, in, in the whole article he didn't mention jesus he didn't mention the lord after reading the conversation i'm just sitting here as a child of god i, I said there was nothing to eat in anything that man said there was nothing to eat in that man said. And here's a man known for or recognized as being a great preacher pastor. And so how long can somebody talk to you about what's going on in the world before you start talking about Jesus? I hope not very long. So I hope whether it's a, whether it's a newspaper article or an interview, that kind of thing, that, that you wouldn't be able to ask me a question or two before I'm hitting you with chapter and verse. Because that's really all I have. But then there are people who are expected to have chapter and verse, Christians, who don't have it. And how many Christians do you know can talk to you all day about what's going on and their opinions and what they heard before we get to say, hey, we need to pray. Or before we get to say, hey, you know, what does Jesus say about this? What's in the word? Did you Can you find that in the word? Can you find Black Lives Matter in the word? Can you find... Can you find in the word what does the Lord say about 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 an, an election fraud? What does the Lord? I wrote a, I wrote an article uh, and I shared it on Facebook uh, about Jesus and and the stolen election or Jesus and election fraud. I wrote it because uh, because I was able to put together uh, the proof that there was no election fraud. There's proof and it's in the Bible. But how many of us do the reasoning with God that we can go step by step? and take what's happening in the world today and place it against the scriptures and go like god already answered that question <laughs> the answer to that question real briefly is is the way i know there's no voter fraud because jesus said jesus said if the thief knew uh if the owner of the house knew the thief was coming he would not have, he would not have left the house alone right so if you're going to cry 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 that if i lose the election is stolen and you're the one with all the power and the election still gets stolen uh, uh, Jesus said that you weren't going to leave your house because you thought they might steal the election. And you watched the election. <coughs> and you know good and well that it was the cleanest election we've ever had. Because the Bible says, if you know the thief is coming, then you stay home. So everybody in every state stay home to make sure the thief didn't come and steal. <coughs> Why? Because Jesus said that's what we do. Jesus said that. <coughs> because if I know my house is going to get broken in tonight, I'm going to be home with my bat. And you can come and do it if you want. <laughs> it's not going to work out well for you. And that's the, that's what happened with the election. Everybody was watching because we know the thief's coming. And we keep telling, get being told the election is going to get stolen. Well, every single secretary of state watched the election. Like we never watched the election before. Because nobody wanted to be responsible uh, for anything going on. And because Jesus said that. Jesus said, that's what people do. And that's what we do. If you have any wisdom at all, you'll leave the house if you, if you think it's going to get broken into. And so there's, and you and I have to be able to um, look at the things that are happening today and fight, fight, fight against our own um, 
you know, natural perspectives, uh, which which may be respectable and all that, but but then there's a spiritual perspective that God will give us in the Word. And so, how committed are we to that? That's my question. How committed am I to it? Um, and that's been my desire. That's been my um, that's been my life effort um, to be able to give an answer, you know, uh, from the Scriptures. And you wouldn't interview me or talk to me very long without hearing about Jesus Christ. You might get saved. No, so <laughs> be careful. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Dorita. I know that's a long, long answer, but that's that says what the. I guess I needed to get that out. <laughs> okay, let me move the screen back. Okay, who has the next question? If you don't have questions, I'm gonna just start talking. <laughs> okay, Aaron, I see you. Okay, let me catch you the spotlight. And I'll ask you to unmute. There you go. You're good to go. There we go. I think I got it out now. Sorry, Jack. Good, good evening, everybody. Thank you, Pastor. Um, yeah, my question is um, out of the scripture that says, um, uh, Psalm 27, 127, and it says, mm -hmm. unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman uh, stays awake in vain. It is vain to rise up early and to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrows, for he gives his beloved sleep. And um, I've heard I've heard you say, uh, you know, that we're to we're to work with Jesus and not for him. Um, and so I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about just um, just the practicalities of that of what that looks like for us as believers to really, really walk our faith out day by day, moment by moment um, with the Lord um, in general. So that's my, that's my mm -hmm. question. I wonder if you could okay. speak in. Um, uh, there was a statement I was looking for. It won't, won't come to me. Um, you know, what we focus on um, really is, is the most determining factor in our lives. Okay, what, what and who we focus on, the most the, the, the most determining factor in our lives. Um, and so um, I want to relieve all of you of any pressure uh, whatsoever that comes with this Christian life um, that is not imposed on you <laughs> by the Lord, uh, that there's some uh, goal or there's some errand that you have to be in order for, or, or that there's, there's some, there's something that God is doing other than, than, um, uh, than recognizing and blessing the Christ in you. Um, so I hope, 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 you know, that, that this ministry and what we do simplifies those things. Your apprehension of the man, Jesus Christ, uh, will cover every every uncovered thing and it will bless everything uh, about you everything about your dealings even your mistakes will be blessed even your your, your slip-ups you know you'll you'll end up in a better place because god will bless you um uh, just because you have made the lord your delight you know there's, there's several psalms to talk about that about the man that made the, 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 the Lord his delight. And, the, and, and, you know, I'd rather dwell uh, uh, in, in the tents of the righteous rather than the mansions of the wicked. And, and, and one thing I desire the Lord, you know, uh, to be basically be found in your presence, you know, day and night, night and day, and, uh, and trusting the Lord. You know, when I'm afraid, I would trust in the Lord. The, the entire, um, as, as I walk with the Lord more, the, the entire uh, uh, energy and effort of our life is to keep everything before Jesus, to keep Jesus before everything. Um, and, and, and if we do, then we'll be caught up in a relationship with him. And we won't be caught up in the stuff or the work or, or, or the, I mean, think about it. You can accomplish, you can accomplish what, did, did, doesn't Ecclesiastes tell us that this all vanity, that we can accomplish, we can start the biggest church ever and baptize thousands and thousands of people, but there's millions and millions who aren't baptized. So, um, I mean, you know, how do you measure these things? If, if you measure them according to numbers and measure to them according to the way men measure things, God knows what he's doing. And so the, the effort that you and I put in, into life, if we're gonna have life, is the effort into being close to Jesus Christ. Uh, and that will embrace every single thing that matters to you because God knows what matters. He knows what's important. 
and you know by you know it's not like i'll focus on jesus and once again as people always say you're so heavenly minded you know you're not earthly good <laughs> you know you're not any earthly good until you are heavenly minded you know um and so this I, I i think if we can get ourselves out of the the work for god um you know out, out of the work for god mode out of the, the work for god mindset uh and and god working in me um that is that's a that's a lot of work um, but it is the work, um, the focus on the work God is doing in me and not the work I'm doing for God. If God is working in you, you will do plenty for God. You'll do plenty for God because you have God in you. You cannot give what you don't have. You have God in you to give. But many of us work for God. We don't have much God to give. Let me tell you something. If, you, if you're not in the word, if you're not in your word daily, you don't have much God to give. I mean, I hope you don't hear that. People don't hear that as like, oh, man, I got one more thing to do. Well, how many chapters, Pastor? That's between you and Jesus. If you don't crack that word, though, <laughs> that word is water to my soul. And there's a lot of dry, dusty Christianity, you know, around dry fruit. You know, you eat the fruit of some of these ministries and ministers, and man, you come up with a stomach ache. You come up with more questions than answers. It's always been my determination that you would never come out with more questions than answers. And if you do have questions, that we answer them, you know, and and that because I believe that's what my job is. But, you know, uh, so, um, you know, the, the whole effort of being close to Jesus is worth it. It's worth cutting all of those stuff out. <laughs> it's cutting as much out as possible. But then you'll find out you're working more and working harder and we're, and we're working more productively than ever, you know, be, when you're following Jesus. It's not like you follow Jesus and you start working. No, the work just begins when you follow Jesus and, and you, you you end up being more productive and more uh, and, and refreshed in the work. And as you read, it, it talks about he gives his beloved sleep. Why? Because it takes some refreshment in order to, to work for the Lord. You got you have to sleep. You're tired. Because the Lord is working you and that flesh is surrendering and the spirit is living. And uh, that flesh needs some rest so that the spirit has a platform, you know, hands and feet to do what it is that God has given us to do. Uh, so it all works together. Um, you will do more work and be more productive uh, having God work through you than you will working for God. Thank you, Aaron. Also, really quick, Pastor wanted to, Pastor Suzanne wanted to um, comment as well. There you go. Aaron's question brought something to mind, and I hope this speaks to it um, in terms of how to walk out this walk. The passage that came to mind was the steps of the righteous are ordered by God. And so when I was in a season of life where I had more questions than answers, um, that particular passage was a great comfort to me. That along with the passage that says that every day of my life is already written out in the Lamb's book of life. So what that said to me is that I don't have to figure out my days I have to get in touch with Jesus <laughs> and walk according to the direction that he's already figured out. And so the approach that I took was one of life being this big exam um, for which I did not know <laughs> enough of the answers in order to pass. Um, but Jesus has all the, um, what is it, the cliff notes? He, 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 has, he, has, he has the syllabus, he has everything. And so I just have to go to him and to find out from him uh, what step to take. Um, and so that helped me out a lot and, and took some of the weight off um when you're wondering how can i do this walk and do this walk well because there's so many things to do and of course we want to do all of it just perfectly <laughs> but um that's our plan 
and we're supposed to be walking out his plan. <laughs> that other plan um, usually doesn't work out too well. I, I, his plan works better. So that's how I resolved that, that issue that you just shared. I've heard it said, man plans and God laughs. You know, so. <laughs> uh, any, anybody else? One more? One more question. Any anything been uh, been on your heart, on your mind? Okay, um, Pastor Sue, I see you. Let me highlight you again, and then I'll ask you to unmute. Once you grab, I'm guessing you're grabbing your Bible. Second <laughs> um, Corinthians, Pastor, if you could pull it up. Second Corinthians five one through ten. If you mm -hmm. could, if you could read that and connect that with um, the discussion of when we receive our resurrected bodies. When we receive um, the glorified bodies. Yes, glorified bodies. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, but we know that if our earthly house, this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent grown, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who is prepared, who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the spirit as a guarantee. Um, there was a probably a more exhaustive treatment of, this, uh, of that particular subject in 1 Corinthians 15. But um, in First Thessalonians 4, it's funny, many times I've read this passage, I always have a hard time finding it, um, where he's talking about, um, but I do not want, okay, First, uh, First Thessalonians 4, 13, and this is Paul speaking, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep, in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord go by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So we're talking also, well, let's just go real quickly to 1 Corinthians 15. I'm trying to get in here where, uh, uh, let's get in at verse 12. First Corinthians 15, 12, uh, Paul speaking again. Now, if Christ has preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say there's no resurrection of the dead? But if there's no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. If Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Yes, we have found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he did not raise up, if in fact the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most pitiable. Now, but now Christ is risen from the dead and has come uh, to the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Since, for since by man came death, by man also came resurrection of the dead. For as Adam and Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, afterwards those who are Christ's at his coming. Then comes the end when he delivers his kingdom 
to God the Father when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy will be destroyed is death. For he put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are put under him, it is evident that he who put all things under him is accepted. Now when all things are made subject to him, then the Son himself will also be subject to him who put all things under him, that God may be all in all. And so, um, and then he goes on to talk about if there's no resume. So, uh, the glory, okay, uh, maybe this specifically after all that reading is what I'm looking for at 1 Corinthians 15. Um, but so, at verse 35, but someone will say, how are the dead raised up? And with, with, with what body do they come? Foolish one, what you sow is not made alive until it dies. What you sow, you do not sow that that body, you do not sow that, bo that body that shall be. Sorry about that. Uh, but mere grain, perhaps wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he pleases, and to each seed its own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another kind of animals, another fish, another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies, but the glory of the celestial one and the glory of the terrestrial one is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars, for one star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown in natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body. And there is a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man Adam became a living being, the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, and afterward the spiritual. The first man was of the earth made of dust. The second man is of the Lord from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are all those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so are those who are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. So all that being said, <laughs> I guess it, hopefully that answers uh, whatever question there might have been. So uh, if there's a particular order of things, I guess, um, you know, the Lord talks about uh, um, uh, that which happens at his return when he, when he, when he comes uh, uh, to, to the earth. Um, and, and there are two things. Um, when we say the return of Christ, there, there, there are two things that we are, there are two separate things that we ought to, to, to pay uh, attention to. Him coming in the clouds and receiving us up to himself, that's the rapture. And then there's, there's the day when he comes and he puts his feet on the earth. Those are two different things. And so we're called to Jesus Christ. Those of us who have perished, we have gone to those bodies go into the ground, as we know, and our spirits, our souls go to be with the Lord. And there comes a time when he reunites uh, uh, us with a physical nature. And uh, he talks about those who, are, who will be caught up to meet him when he comes in the air. And they will be changed as they're drawn to him. But they will not precede us because the first ones that will rise will be us. The, 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 and the physical nature will be, will be raised and re recomposed and raised and glorified uh, to, re to reunite with the invisible part of us, which has already uh, been in the bosom of Christ all that time. So there is a, there is a timing on these things and there is the, the reward and the giving of a, of, of a glorified body, a body that's built for eternity. And, and that is something that happens for us when Jesus comes back for all of us. And, and those of us who are alive will be caught up to meet him. And we will be clothed then with the glorified bodies. But those of us who are already dead, uh, there's a recomposition of this physical nature for the purpose of God taking that and changing it into um, and giving us and rewarding us and giving us a, a, a body once again fit for eternity. So, you know, the, the, sometimes the order, the, the order of things, you know, gets gets pretty you know can get get a little convoluted sometimes but the thing is is that each and every one of us the lord are going to um we, we were sown in corruption this body because of sin is sown in corruption but it is raised according to the power that raised jesus from the dead the same power that raised our savior from the dead raises us from the dead and as he presented his to himself to his disciples as flesh and bone uh because he said flesh a spirit does not have flesh and spirit alone does not have flesh and bone like you see me have touch me put your hand here put your hand there and so the body that he had reflected the body that he lived in when he was here on earth because he said put your hand put your hands fingers in my wounds you know this is that body 
But that body has been glorified and that body has been perfected. So, you know, God is going to glorify and perfect this body. You know, he's going to glorify and perfect this body just as Christ was in the same body and had the marks of it. And so, um, you know, and, and, and how that pertains specifically to me and you, whether you'll look the same or, or be a better looking version of yourself or whatever, but you will be you. You will you will be you. They recognize him when their eyes were open. They recognize him and say, hey, you want to make sure that it's me? Put your hand in my wounds. Put your hand in my side and feel where they pierce me. And, and, and a, a spirit, I have a body now. I was raised and I was given a body. Okay, because you know that body went to the tomb. But Jesus himself, uh, he went and did work during those three days that the body was in the tomb. He went and did work. He preached He preached the gospel to everyone who had passed, uh, to the judgment of those who were unbelieving, and, and to the glory of those who were believing. And he, he, he took captivity captive, and those... Uh, who would, were not to, able to, to, to who had passed the, the, the Old Testament saints, so to speak, who had passed and, and, and were not uh, privy to the presence of God in the way that they are now that Christ is glorified. He led captivity captive. And, and, and those who are being held until the day of judgment will be there until that day. And the rest of us, when these bodies go in the ground, the body definitely goes in the ground and you can go dig these bodies up there and you'll find that they're there. But the Lord is going to recompose and resurrect those bodies because he built them and he's, he's not done with them yet. And, he, you know, he'll pull the bodies out of the sea and, and recompose the bones that have been that have been scattered. And and, uh, and and he will call us to himself. And in that in, in that time between him, him recomposing us and drawing us to himself, he will glorify us. So these bodies that he raises, he glorifies just like Jesus' body was raised from the dead and was glorified. And uh, and he's fit for eternity. Jesus, the 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 only thing in heaven, you know, that this man made is is the scars in Jesus's hand. You know, uh, everything else passes away. And 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 uh, so that you know, it, it's just no. I think the thing that we we need to walk away with uh, in, when it comes to those kind of things is knowing that God, um, your eternity is going to be experienced in the full three hundred sixty. Um, uh, of experience, you will not just be a spirit, something that is, is wind or, or invisible and as important as that is, and life being in the spirit, but you also will be given uh, a body to experience all the heavenly things, because God is a God of the physical and natural every bit as much as he's God of the spiritual. Um, it's just that, that, that there's an order to things, and um, you know, so natural first, then the spiritual. Natural bodies right now, spiritual bodies bodies but spiritual bodies um uh, coming coming at you you know so i you know there was a lot i know but i hope it was <laughs> i hope, hope it's clear <laughs> it was good pastor sue said she she thought that we we're going to get a better looking body <laughs> not the same <laughs> well i'm not i'm not going to comment on that <laughs> I'm not going to say a word, Aaron. <laughs> the kids think that we'll be able to fly. They're pretty convinced about that part. <laughs> uh, I don't know why it's funny. I, I don't know why people want to fly. You, you know, I was th it's funny, uh, the things that I think about. I was thinking the other day why we, don't, why we really don't want to fly. Flying's not the issue. Landing's the issue. <laughs> you know, <laughs> may I tell you why? Because if you want to fly, you want to be built like a bird. <laughs> because because birds land well, they fly, but they land well because because of those legs and feet. You want you want you want legs and feet like that, then you should be okay. You know, God will God will give you you know give you legs and feet like that, and you can fly. Because flying ain't the issue. Landing is the issue. And these bodies right here, they are not meant to land very well. <laughs> they were not built for that. You know, and so um, anyway, <laughs> landing's an issue. Flying's not a problem. So, uh, well, everybody, <laughs> before I get either even further off subject, off topic here, um, thank you for your time. Thank you for your questions, your presence, and all that. And uh, look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Uh, uh, my man, uh, last two weeks uh, coming up of uh, Fear of Faith uh, starting tomorrow night. And um, uh, I know there's, there's things that are going with the ladies, 
Thank you for your presence. Um, we are we are uh, working on um, a plan, uh, receiving a plan, Lord, to get, of, of getting back together, uh, and uh, and we'll let that work itself out. Uh, but it would seriously, and I, I want to let you know that um, that when it comes to things in the body of Christ, I wait on the Lord, and that's not no commentary on anything anybody else does. Um, but you know, this just commentary on what we do. So God bless you. I love you. Um, keep the um, Smith uh, uh, Merch family in, in your prayers, and uh, we will keep you uh, abreast um, of anything that that uh, we need to know as a church family to cover their family. Amen. Bless you all. Love you, and I'll see you soon. Thanks, Monica. Thanks, Monica would have liked this pastor, Harry. <laughs> I know she would. Yes, she she Bye, everyone. Have a good night. Bye. Because